You're sexy. Is that unprofessional of me? I don't know. I'm sorry, but like, I'm just like, damn. Mira, pisando está, man. No hay algo por no. The cop's job is to uphold the law and protect us. But what happens when some cops abuse their authority to coerce, manipulate, and blackmail suspects into sexual favors? There are eight times when cops try to seduce suspects and how they got busted. Starting off with a Maryland police officer, Francesco Marlett, who dared to kiss a woman outside of his patrol car on the street in the daytime. In the video, filmed by Nelson Okoa, the pair can be seen having the time of their life with the officer wrapping his arms around the girl regardless of the children who can be heard playing in the background. <laughs> The officer is not satisfied, so now they decide to have some privacy and they get into the backseat of the patrol car. The video quickly went viral on TikTok, causing the Prince George's County Police Department to suspend the officer as they continue to investigate the matter. He will definitely know his responsibility better than ever. Despite the unprofessionalism, this looked consensual, but the next cop is about to abuse his power in an unexpected way. Florida police officer Dustin Fetz turned a routine traffic stop particularly uncomfortable when he asked Zoe Brugger, the girl who was driving home after picking up her boyfriend from work, to shake out her bra. Zoe is pulled over for a broken headlight when Officer Fetz gets her out of her car after suspecting her of possessing drugs. Fetz also turned off the dash cam microphone to prevent any audible evidence. He then proceeds to do the most disgusting thing, asking her to put her shirt up and shake out her bra in order to see if she's hiding any illegal stuff in there. Zoe looks extremely uncomfortable and sad over her humiliation and starts crying, but it does not affect the officer in any way. Thankfully, Zoe was paid a settlement of $25,000 by the city of Lakeland, and Fetz was suspended for four days, which made many people unhappy, as it looked unjust, but it was quite fair as he lost his reputation. This next cop is the perfect example of when a pervert becomes a cop. Oklahoma police officer D'Angelo Reyes was on a casual investigation duty for a murder suspect when he encountered a woman and suddenly found her attractive enough to start flirting with her. During the investigation, he asked the woman personal questions like her name and residence, and even tells his fake name to her to prevent any suspicion, but the body cam gets it all. Oh, okay. I mean, I heard some noise in that, that direction, but I didn't Okay. Anybody. Oh, do you live around here? Uh, yeah, I stay at the hotel. Oh, which one? The studio. Oh, okay. What's your name? My name? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Eric. He just cannot stop himself right now, and proceeds to hit on the woman in inappropriate ways, making her a little uncomfortable. You're sexy. Is that unprofessional of me? I don't know, I'm sorry, but like, I'm just like, damn. He then asks if she is free to meet him at night, and if she has a room at the motel she is staying in. He even dares to turn the body camera off at this point. You just chilling tonight? Okay. 
If I'm wandering around, where should I wander? At the studio star. Oh, Karoom? Okay. Oh, really? Okay. After turning the body camera off, Reyes got the woman's number and ran her through the system, leading to a shocking discovery. The woman had a long criminal history, which Reyes saw as an opportunity to use against her. At the motel that night, he asked the woman to sleep with him or he would put her back in jail. The poor woman had no choice but to follow what he said. At first, Reyes denied sleeping with her, but later confessed to it, saying it was consensual. He then resigned from his job and was charged with first-degree rape. Now let's see another pervert cop who didn't miss his chance when he got one. Kaylee Coates was with her boyfriend and family members when she was pulled over by Louisville Metro Police and one of the officers, Tyler Gelnet, who was in training, when asked to search the woman, inappropriately placed his hands in her crotch area. Tyler proceeds to search her and can be seen putting hands between her legs really inappropriately, which makes her terribly embarrassed and uncomfortable before the senior officer notices and asks him to stop. Hey, hey, hold on. Stop, stop. Time, time out, time out. Go back there. Go back there. That is when the senior officer admits Tyler's mistake to her boyfriend. He had no idea what he's doing. I'll be honest with you. Tyler was charged with official misconduct for this, and the woman was paid $50,000 to settle the lawsuit she filed against LMPD. Now, we will see how this female officer seduced a prison inmate in a strange turn of events. I just want you to look at me sometimes be like, damn, my woman's fine. Fine why? Prison officer Charlene O'Banion was interrogated after she was accused of having a relationship and sleeping with a prison inmate. During the interrogation, the detectives let her know that they are aware of the situation, which shocks her, making her realize that her crime is no more a secret. We're notified of a possible improper relationship between you and uh, Jacob Parker. So we're here for that. I just kind of want to talk to you about it and get your side of that story. I don't know about it. I mean, okay. Have you talked to him on any jail phone calls or anything like that? but it is no problem for her now, as she denies all the allegations and acts innocent. Little does she know that the detectives have everything they need to prove her wrong. They are just interviewing her to get to know her side of the story. We never like, we never dated. We just... Okay. What kind of conversations have you had with him since you started working here and he's been in the jail? Uh, I don't know, just talking about what would happen after he got out. And then the jail call recordings, have you been talking to him like while you're at home? Like he calls you from the jail while you're at home? Or? She completely makes up a story, thinking it would help her get away with the interrogation easily, but she definitely is wrong to think that. And where would you think that this allegation would come from if there's nothing to it? Um, well, I had a feeling this was coming. So there was an inmate um, named Coker, Justin Coker. Okay. He got out of here for, I don't know, what period of time. And he tried to contact me on Facebook. He sent me a message and I blocked him on Facebook. And um, I guess one time Parker was going back to Bequot to use the bathroom and he was talking like at the window with me. Mm -hmm. And I guess Coker like didn't like that, which I had no contact with him or anything. And um, Parker had told me that he had gone up to him and was like, don't talk to her or something crazy like that. So uh, I'm just not trying to be rude here. I'm just, yeah. why would you expect this conversation to come up from that? Like now, if that happened a few months ago. The detective is fed up with her lies and fake stories and decides to show some evidence telling her about the jail call recordings of her. But even that doesn't affect her and she keeps her calm while continuously lying about any recent interactions with the guy. I don't know exactly where, how it started, like who it started from, um, but I was told that it was brought to somebody's attention and then we looked at jail calls and there's jail calls between you and Parker and all that stuff's recorded. So. I don't think you're being completely truthful. Well, I, I kind of know that you're not. And I'm not trying to be rude when I say that. Yeah, no. Um, I'm just kind of trying to lay it out on the table for you. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of tell me what's going on? Um, I guess a few years ago, we we talked, and then I ended up here, and then he ended up here. I didn't know he was here. I didn't, like, it wasn't anything like that. Um, 
The detective now moves on to talk about the more intimate details of their relationship to reveal the truth without wasting any more time. She confesses to having a little physical relationship with the guy, but tries to make the detective believe that all of this happened years back. So when you say y'all talked about kind of dated a little bit before you started no, working No, like he, he was never like my boyfriend or anything. I just knew him from like the world. Okay. So are y'all kind of talking in a sexual nature no. now that he's here? Oh, no, no, no. Now that he's here, no. Okay. I mean, it's never been like like phone sex or anything like that. Like, that's not... But, like, we all joke around. Like, we all make, like, you know, like, that's what she said type yeah. things. But it's never like... So what about some of these phone conversations? Um... No, no, not here or the phone. I thought no, I just mean conversations y'all are having on the phone. No, no. Since he's been in here. Like. Well, not. I'm not saying having phone sex, talking about sexual acts. My, from what I'm listening to on the calls, I take it as that you've given him oral sex at some point. Is what no, I no, gather no, from no, these calls. No, no, no. no, that was like in the world, but we never like, we never dated. We just. Okay. But you've. You've had physical relationship with him when y'all were both out. Out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was before. Okay. But it was. We never like had sex or anything. It was just kind of like that. You gave him oral sex. Yeah. Okay. But that was before like I knew he would end up here or that I would end up here or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. And what a. And I know I'm sorry to get in your business, but no. the allegations been made, so I want to have as much detail as I can. Right. 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 To, say either way. Mm -hmm. So when do you think that was about? I know it's going to be hard if it was a couple of years ago, but. Um, let me think. I was, I want to say like in the past three years. So the only solution to get to know the truth now is to show the clearest evidence the detectives have, which is the jail calls between Charlene and the guy. A recording of just the most recent call for us to listen to. Um, and kind of my intent behind that is I still don't feel like you're, you're coming out with the whole thing. So, like I said, I'm not trying to badger you or nothing. Um, I just think that it's important that we know uh, exactly what happened. So. so initially you said you kind of like played it off like you hardly knew him. Oh, you kind of like stood there and thought. Oh, right now, like, right oh, now. Parker, yeah, I think he's in pot six. Mm -hmm. But I just looked in the system. There's like almost 400 calls. So between y'all. Yeah. You see what I'm? You see where I'm coming from? Kind of how it would seem from my point of mm -hmm. view. No, no judgment here. I just want to know the truth. That's, yeah. That's it. And I mean, I should just so before we go into all this, do you want to just I mean, tell me the truth? Yes, I hesitated to admit that. Hey, baby. Get that. Baby, guess what? Nothing. I just won the blackjack game. <laughs> Yay. I just want $30. I got a lot of stuff to clean and get rid of before you come home. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just fucking you. Let's try to make you think I have all these secret things. Yeah, I bet you do. What? 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 What do you mean? I don't know. You probably got this weird sex swing hanging from the ceiling. Kenneth probably thinks it's a swing set. Oh, if I had that sex swing, you better believe I'd leave that sucker up for you. Would you really? Hell yeah. You'd let me put you in it? Yeah. With a gag bar and everything? <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to look at me sometimes and be like, damn, my woman's fine. Fine as wine. And you got a, a live ass fucking head game. Oh my god. <laughs> eh, it wasn't my best moment. I was just trying to get it done. Meh, meh. Are you in bed? Don't even. 
scared me thinking about that because it makes me so horny. Like just going back and thinking about yeah. that. It gets you horny? Oh yeah. When you felt me, I was like soaking through my clothes. You get very horny very easy. I always want to have not sex. Good. Like that's not even... Not good. I mean, it's not like I just like look at someone, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so fucking horny. No, like of course, like I only get horny for you. But even after this, she has the audacity to deny the truth, which makes the detectives uncomfortable, and that is when the other detective takes over the interrogation, getting straight forward with Charlene, as he knows she will never admit the truth the easy way. You can of see how that sounds from like my point of view, like a more recent thing than three years ago. No? What's coming to mind, Chris? Yes. So, I noticed one thing, and I want you to understand this about both of us. Both of us are veteran homicide detectives, okay? I've been doing this a while. Okay. All right? You seem to have blanks in your memory when we get to certain details, but you remember being groped in a blowjob from three years ago. I find that hard to believe, okay? This is your one chance to be honest with us. Yes. Once we get up and walk out and we're done. Finally. Now she is about to admit the truth, maybe after being apprehended by the tone of the other detective. She finally breaks and realizes that she is going to lose her job, obviously. And honesty is the only thing that's going to help you with us. Mm -hmm. So my advice to you right now is to be honest with us. Have you all had any inappropriate contact, whether it's groping, blowjobs, vaginal, anal sex, anything, hand jobs? Yes, I am being vulgar to get a point across. Yeah, no, it's not. None of that. Um. I mean, what is it? Uh, I might have given him a blowjob in the back part of the. In the back part of the quad? Okay. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? Uh. Uh. A few months ago. A few months ago. How long have you worked here? Uh. Since April. Since April this year. Mm -hmm. Was he already here? He was right here. Okay. Do you know how long he's been here? I don't know. Don't know? Okay. Not at the top of my head. So you did. So a few months ago, you gave him a blow job in the back of B. Is mm -hmm. that correct? And that's B quad, correct? Yeah. Was any, were there any other witnesses to it? Okay. No. I'm just wondering because like you Like people standing around while I'm... Well, you were, you were work days, right? Yes. Were you working days at the time? Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm asking. Was anyone yes. around because... No. I mean, everybody's up in daytime. Oh, my God. oh man, I'm gonna so, ask, but I feel like I know the answer. I'm losing my job. So that's that's not really up to me. Um, Internal Affairs is aware of the allegations, um, and they will probably they their investigation is separate from ours. That was not all. Losing the job was not the worst that happened to her, as she was sentenced to 100 days in prison. Hopefully, she's learning some life lessons there. Charlene was involved with one guy, but this next evil cop was involved in inappropriate physical activities with many underage children. So right now, and I'll go over the behavior with you, you know, we're investigating allegations that were made that you were communicating with a younger female on Snapchat and potentially some material that had been Officer Jalen Devin Fleer was arrested after a four-month investigation into a case in which he was involved involved in inappropriate physical acts with underage girls, as well as attempts to meet up with minors for evil purposes. During the interrogation, Detective Kale and Detective Rodriguez explain the accusations made against him, but he answers very calmly in his defense. He's a little speechless when the detective provides some evident information.
offensive statements, saying there was nothing wrong with that photo. But the detective has more to tell him, which gets him a little... He does not seem to want to admit his crimes anytime soon, but the detective does not give up and continues to ask him twisted questions, which might at some point help to get him to speak the truth.
the detective calls in the lab technician to do the DNA swab test, which is the final phase of the interrogation before it ends. Okay. Um, is your mom at your house right now? She's not. Okay. Um, your wife, she is at home? She's at home. Okay. Um, is it just your wife at home? Just my wife. Okay. Um, and her name is... Sending us sometimes for work, we carry them around. Yeah, with no, us. I, I have a USB in my locker, but that's just a work locker USB. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll get that started. Okay. Um, and then after that, we know that your employers want to speak with you. Again, we are investigating allegations. They yes. recognize that, but of course, you know that they have to take their action. We can't speak to that. Um, but of course, um, they obviously want the opportunity to speak with you. Yeah. Um, then, of course, we'll um, process the locker. And
found guilty of 18 felony and two misdemeanor charges. Fleer did not make a statement at his sentencing hearing. His attorney argued that Fleer should be sentenced to a term of just over nine years, but the judge sentenced him to 12 years in state prison. Some people were satisfied with that, while others were just upset considering the severity of his crimes. For the last one, we have a similar case where a cop abused a woman during a traffic stop, and many others too. Did your penis go in her mouth? No, it did not. Okay. Because DNA will clear it up. Officer Daniel Holtzclaw was interrogated for a traffic stop stop, where he reportedly abused a 57-year-old woman in the back of his patrol car. During the interrogation, the detective keeps a very calm and friendly tone while asking Daniel to tell the truth, as it can save him from big trouble, but he wishes not to speak the truth and get away without the consequences. And here's the deal, too. I... It, we can fall on the sword okay. and say I screwed up or something, but if we say we didn't do it, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, and then the DNA comes back and says he did it then we have a huge problem. The detective then finds out that the traffic stop on that day was totally unofficial and was not even recorded on the body camera, which is another big evidence. He then explains that traffic stop, and the detective gets his nervousness clearly along the way. You had said, and we told you that there was a traffic stop, right. that somebody made some allegations against an officer. Right. They don't know the officer's name, none of that. But, and you said that you made a traffic stop after work, yeah. but you didn't call it in. I didn't call it in. Where was that? It was about northeast 50th and Lincoln just to the west. Okay. Tell me about that stop. I was going westbound on northeast 50th, probably a block just east of uh, Lincoln. I see a red Grand Prix or Grand Dam in my right lane, in the outside lane, I'm in the inside lane. The car swerves. And so at the time I'm thinking, okay, it's a, probably a drunk person or maybe I got excited because they saw a cop. So I kind of f fall behind it, kind of drifting just a little bit, not crossing the lines, nothing crazy. So I light it up because it, at first the traffic violation I saw at first when it swerved and then made contact. It was a black female, um, asked for license insurance, um, stated that she didn't have insurance, gave me an ID. At the time, I'm like, do you have a valid insurance or a valid license? She said, no. I told her, I just got off work. I mean, <laughs> what's the deal? You know, why, why are you swerving? And she says, um, I'm just trying to go home to Ann Arbor-ish on the northwest side. Of um, do you remember her name? It was on the I description. I don't, I don't. Okay. Um, do you make traffic stops normally after work? I don't, but in that case, I solar swerve and whatnot so i i mean me i don't felt <laughs> i know i mean people I know, I cops say that is have a you know whatnot <laughs> right. death, the vision whatever but i felt like i needed to make that traffic stop. okay how was she was she respectful was she she not? felt like was she, she was nervous and whatnot and i'm like why are you nervous and she was even crying i'm like why are you crying why are you nervous whatnot and she's just like i don't know I, just nervous because you're a cop and I got pulled over. I'm like nothing you had to be nervous about. And I told her, I'm like, I don't really want to take you to jail for no SDL or anything. I just got off work. I'm tired. And so with my officer, um, courtesy or whatnot, I said I'd go get that taken care of tomorrow. According to him, everything he did during that traffic stop was perfect and consensual. Put her out of the car? Yes. Okay. Um, and put her in the back of your car? Yes. Okay. Um, any problems there? No, she was cooperative. Didn't give me any problems or whatnot. Okay. And then you searched, did you run her through Unit 800? I didn't. You didn't? Mm -hmm. So, did you run her on your MDT? No, I didn't. All my all my stuff as far as that, because I didn't even call it in and say I was a traffic stop, my computer was off and everything as well. Did you shut it off I just shut it off, work? yeah. On the way, on 50th, I turned it off right before the traffic stop, basically. When you, um, when you put her in your car, did you pat search her? Uh, when I came around, I was like, lift up your shirt, is there anything on you, anything as far as your waistband or anything like that? She said no. And then I put her in the vehicle and went from there. Did, her did your hands go on her at all? I backhanded, I backhanded her on as far as the side. Where on her body? Tell me. You backhanded her. Her waist, her waist, and the back portion. I didn't touch her or anything, but the back portion and the waist. And then she lifted it up like right here. And there's nothing Did she on. lift it up like this? No. Okay. So she never, like... 
like, ooh, not no. exposed or anything like that. She asked me if I was like, no, it's okay. She asked you? If it, you want to search me, I'm like, no, it's okay. Uh, so she never, like, put her hands on the car and you... No. The interrogator gets more specific about the details, asking every possible question that can make him confess. Well, she's... It, it sounds like this is the lady... I mean, this is the deal where she's the complaining party. Okay. Okay. And she's making some sexual allegations, obviously, because Strums is working it. Right. What did she say? Well, was there anything, an accidental touch, a anything? If she thought it uh, when I passed her, Drew, but I, it was nothing as far as I felt like I would do anything as far as sexual or anything like that. And for my safety, I just checked to see the weapons right and there. Make and it, I, to make clear, I didn't, didn't touch her butt, but the waist side and whatnot. If you would like me to do it for me to show you. <laughs> no, and I'm, fi I'm fine with it, and you have every right to do that. She's saying that you made her lift up her shirt, and she, and when she lifted up her shirt, she exposed her breasts. No, no. Did you ever see I her asked her, is there, I asked her, is there anything inside your bra? And she said, no. So I was like, okay. And she said, you want me to show you? And that's all the time I said, no. No, you don't need to do that. She said that, she said, do you want, she said she was doing this. When you said, is there anything inside your bra? And she was, well, no, I don't have anything like that. Did she do that? Yeah, she did, but I didn't look or anything like like that. Right. And then she was like, do you want me to show you? I was like, no. She said when she said, do you want me to show you? You said, yeah, and she went, woo No, I didn't. But could she have been, woo flashing you? And what? now you don't want to tell me because you're afraid you're no, in trouble? No, no. When I told her no, I said no. Then she didn't go, yeah, no. you know, because sometimes drunk girls are... Having a good time. Yeah, right. and, and no. partying down. And let's face and it. I've already heard stories about officers people want, and whatnot. They so want officers want, for hubbies want, so or I whatever. No. And, or, I said no. But you could have said no. But I'm asking you if she flashed you anyways. I didn't see her. I didn't see, see her. No I didn't see What about pants? Nothing in her pants as far as I can see. She was wearing tight jeans. So she said she pulled them down. I didn't see it. You didn't see her pulling down? I didn't see her pulling down pants. Could she have done it when you were up searching the car? She could have. I didn't Did have she her, have them on? I didn't have her handcuffed or anything. When you came back to the car and got her out, were her pants fastened? Were they? Yeah, everything They was were still, up and... Everything was still intact. So you never saw her pull her pants down? No, I didn't. Another detective then provides all the evidence he has, which starts to pressure Holt's claw, no matter how hard he is trying to keep his calm and cool. We knew you were on that stop. Right. We knew you were there. Mm -hmm. And we can watch a whole lot of actions being performed while you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why she was trying to give you every out on the whole b thing. Right. Okay? Now, is there any reason, any reason at all, even from whatever angle because you know it takes a little bit to clear up those videos right but any reason why your ass would be out no nothing nothing okay now in doing this you know how saint exams work and i ain't got to explain about dna or anything like that right now i didn't say you had sex with her right okay but getting a blood job Okay, that is a different story. Right. Okay. You see my concern here. I'm just listening to you, sir. I know, I but I'd rather listen to you and you start talking. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Dick, are we, are we gonna get something from the same exam? Go with the same exam. Do you, and do you understand that you don't have to full-blown ejaculate to get something out of the same exam? Right. We can get skin cells, we can get pre-ejaculate, do all that and still get DNA. Probably don't, not necessarily going to remember the name, but her name is Terry Morris, okay, black female. Um, supposedly you promised her a ride to the city rescue mission. Just ring a bell? No. You did a, a traffic stop with her. Uh, she thought you ran for warrants. Clicking. Drove her around. Mm -hmm. no. name, name doesn't, I don't recall a name like that. 
she's claiming the same thing. Exact same thing. Detective keeps repeating the same question, hoping to get a different answer at some point, but instead gets frustrated by Daniel's continuous denial. Did your pants come unzipped, unbuttoned, anything while you were standing right there? No. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some big hairs right in here. Could they be yours? No, that's not. I didn't pull my ass out and do anything out there. Did she? No. But she do didn't. you think they could be? No, it's not. No. Nothing of mine. Your boobs couldn't be? No. Right there? No. Has your penis ever been out do by your my, car? While I'm working? No. Not working? No. Have you ever had sex in the back seat of your car? I have not. Because I mean, some people do. You know, I mean, I'm not saying for consensual. Right. So your penis has never been in your back seat. Mm -hmm. Is I, it possible any of this DNA is yours? No. It's not. That's. I would like to go, go at it. Not my DNA. Are those pubes gonna be yours? No. Are you worried about it? I'm this whole situation. I'm but his game is now coming to an end when the detective comes back after talking to his girlfriend, whom he claimed to have slept with, but she said the opposite. You created some more work. Yeah, Fixing to go. <laughs> I just talked to Karen. Okay. She said she was asleep when you got home and you did not try to have sex and you did not have sex. Right. She says you didn't. And I asked her, could you have been asleep? And you had kind of, whoa, no, and she said no. She, you did not try to have sex. As much as I don't want to follow her, I tried to have sex with her and she was asleep. Carrie goes to sleep pretty early, about nine, ten at the late. Okay, but she would know if you tried. I'm a woman. I know. And, and my husband comes <laughs> home in the middle of the night and I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been asleep. You said you twirled around her vagina I did. and you put it in a little bit and then she said, I'm tired. No. I did. She would remember that to tell me. She, maybe. She said you did not try to have sex. <laughs> and it's more personal because it's Carrie, but I did try to have sex with Carrie. I did. What to say? I mean, because it just looks like I just caught you in a lie, and now I don't know I'm, what to believe. I'm telling. I don't know what to believe okay. because you tell me this, I go to verify it. She tells me the opposite, and now I'm now I'm wondering what you're telling the truth about. Maybe because she's she doesn't know what the heck's going on. No, she doesn't. I didn't tell her. And I'm glad, but detectives calling her, any other officer asking her a question like that. I know. She's maybe scared. And I don't want to involve her, but she's involved that's because my you, girlfriend, that's a, you need her involved for you. Right. But now she's given the story that you're not giving. I'm, I'm telling you, I try to ask with Carrie. Like, During the court proceedings, Holt's claw can be seen crying, knowing what is going to happen to him. He bursts into tears when the verdict is being read. For order. This is in the District Court of Oklahoma County, State of Oklahoma, the State of Oklahoma versus Daniel K. Holt's claw. Case number CF 2014-5869. Verdict count one, sexual battery. We the jury impaneled and sworn in the above entitled cause do upon our oaths find as follows. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Count two, procuring lewd exhibition. Not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count three, burglary in the first degree. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of burglary in the first degree, nor lesser included. Count four, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count five, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count six, defendant is not guilty of the crime of stalking. Count seven, 
defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count eight, defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 20 years. Count nine, rape in the first degree. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree. Count 10, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 11, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 12, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 13, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 14, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 15, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count 16, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 17, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 18, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 19, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 20, rape in the first degree. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree. Count 21, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 22, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 23, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 24, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 25, rape in the second degree by instrumentation. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the second degree. Count 26, indecent exposure. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of indecent exposure. Count 27, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 28, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 29, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 30, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 31, rape in the second degree by instrumentation. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the second degree and punishment is set at 12 years. Count 32, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 33, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 34, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 35, defendant procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 36, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Let me ask the jury, is this your verdict, so say you all? Yes. Mr. Holtzclaw, this jury finds you guilty of the various uh, counts. You will be remanded to the custody of the Oklahoma County Sheriff for formal sentencing set January 21st, 2016 at 10 o'clock a.m. All right, you have a seat. Holtzclaw was eventually tried and found guilty of the sexual assault of eight African-American women who were all classed as vulnerable. 
He was sent to prison for a 263-year sentence, thankfully. In conclusion, the ones supposed to enforce the law are not always loyal to their job and commit some of the sickest crimes ever, as we have witnessed. Do you think these cops deserve to get a similar job again? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe for more content. From a woman justifying kicking an officer multiple times because she's the daughter of an FBI agent, to a mother who had to call 911 on her own son for his well-being, here are seven instances when men in blue were faced with unexpected situations while arresting kids in the presence of their parents. On January 8, 2023, Officers were dispatched to the airport after getting a call for a 30-year-old woman, Karina, who was kicked off an airplane for being intoxicated. Well, that was not the only reason, because she was also kicking and cursing at the employees working at the airport. Are you okay? No, not. I'm just checking on you. What's going on? Nothing. What's going on? Okay, well, I need your cops to come right out. Okay, I'm a police officer. I'm here to check on you. Thank you. I need your cops to come right out. Okay, open the stall. Let me, let me. I'm not, I'm not going to do that in a second. Okay, well, I can talk to you through the stall. What's going on? I have no idea. Like, they, like, I have no idea. Everyone in the like, they were fine with me. Uh-huh. They were, like, making an issue. I was like, you're just going to delay your flight. I'm not going to delay your flight. Or are you I'm trying to go home or on vacation? No, I'm going to work. What do you mean? Okay, do you want to come out here and I can help you out? What airline? Oh, I feel like I feel sincere in your place. She had locked herself in the bathroom and she denied coming out. And despite her claims of being perfectly fine with the other passengers on the plane and not causing any disturbance, the truth of her statements would soon be apparent from her behavior. We're going to be here with you the whole time. That's yeah. fine. This is all we want for you to come out. I swear to God. Do you have your boarding pass? Yes, ma'am. Where's your ID? Do you have your ID? Am I? Yes. Get it out for me. I'm going to go to the front here for you. And you, you swear you didn't have anything to drink today? You're fine. Yes, I swear. You did not have anything to drink today? I'm, I am not being out of the drink. Because you can fly if you haven't had anything to drink and they think you're safe to fly. But there has to be a reason for them to kick you off the plane. So just be honest. Just be honest. Thanks to me. Yeah, let's just go out here. Just be honest. It seems the officers genuinely had her best interests at heart, suggesting she could still board the plane if she wasn't intoxicated. And to be honest, it doesn't seem like she may have had a few drinks. Did you have anything to drink today? Is that against the law? No, that's what I'm asking. Do I need a lawyer? No. I'm going to call a lawyer. For what? Before I ask, answer any more questions, I'm going to call a lawyer. Did you have anything to eat today? I'm going to call a lawyer. Before I answer any questions, I'm going to call a lawyer. Did you have anything to eat today? I'm going to call a lawyer. Have you eaten today? That's my lawyer. Yeah, I'm going to come over to a session. She was screaming. We have no idea. I'm ready when you're ready. We literally. Okay, Miss Karina. Please don't touch me if you don't have a reason to. Okay, I have a reason to, okay? You're, I'm arrested? Yes, you're gonna be arrested for public intoxication, okay? Take your backpack Seriously? off. Yep, and the reason is because I talked to the airline and they said that you were kicking and screaming and causing a Take disturbance. I'm not doing any of that. Wait, 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 no, I want to witness. Take your backpack off. Okay, your it's backpack. all being recorded. Yeah. Just take your backpack yeah. off, okay? Are you serious? Take your backpack off. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, will you will I'll you call my dad. I'll call my dad. I'll call my dad. Yeah, no, calm down. Call your backpack Calm down, he's the lieutenant, calm down. No. Back back. She asks officers to call her dad, who she claims to be a lieutenant, thinking using father's position as leverage would really get her out of the trouble she had found herself in. Where's your dad a lieutenant? Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Well, he can't help you here in Texas. Why not? Her hopes of being rescued by her dad were shattered when officers informed her that he couldn't assist her as he was a lieutenant in another state. That's when she began to reveal her true colors. I don't, I really don't feel comfortable I'm with him touching me. I'm standing, I'm standing right here. No, I, do, no, I don't want him touching me. I literally, he's on a power play mode. I don't want him touching me. I, to I literally phone. don't want him touching me. Five seconds. I'm asking you not to let him touch me. I don't want, I ask me, I don't want you touching me. You're already a Do not, do not. Do not. I don't want him touching me. Do I don't want him touching me. I said I don't want him touching me. I don't feel comfortable with him touching me. No, I don't want you touching me. 
she kicked an officer, claiming he had physically touched her when in fact he was simply conducting a search to ensure she wasn't carrying any weapons. What's that? She had a meet you. All right, Karina, can you walk for us? I don't want you to touch me. I don't want to touch you. Karina! Karina! Do you understand? I don't want to touch you. Stop. I said I don't want to touch you. What don't you understand? I don't want to touch you. Do not kick the officer. Do not kick an officer. Okay, so I female officers, let's work really fast. That's a simple point. Do not kick an officer. Okay, I don't want to touch me. Do you understand? He touched me inappropriately. Do you understand? Don't. Is she here? Call my lawyer. Get my lawyer. Get my lawyer. He touched me inappropriately. I don't want to touch me here. You're touching me on my ass. You're touching my ass right now. Do not kick an officer. No, I don't give a f get my lawyer. After kicking the officer once again, the officers firmly warned her that if she repeated such behavior, nobody could prevent her from being taken to jail. All right, Karina, so we're gonna come in here, okay? No. Yeah, you're gonna get out the car for me so we can search you inside. And then you'll be able to call your father, all right? Obviously, like, he's already here. He already has my GPS. That's not, he's in the FBI, not the police department. Okay, so that's besides the point. So yeah, so you really want that to happen? Really? You can make phone calls in here? I don't need a phone call. I don't need I don't need to talk to anybody where I'm out there always in the room. Okay, well let's go. That's on you. Okay. See you well? Yeah. You sure? Positive. Mm. Think about that for Do what? I said think about that for me. Mm. Sure? Karina, come on. Mm. I don't think it's in your best interest. No. Hey, it's either you getting out of the car on your own, or we're gonna have to help you get out of the car. Yeah, it's not your best interest to touch me, Karina. I'm just letting you know from what I'm telling you, what's in your best interest for your we career. To, uh, get our yeah, yeah, yeah. Hop assist, assist that. Go shoot me in the face too. I we're gonna assist me. Karina, don't touch, don't touch me. I don't want you to touch me. I don't Karina. want you to touch me. I'll, I'll get me. Get me. No, go. I'm gonna get in such a danger. Go. Get me. Go. I don't want to. After making threats to officers that she really couldn't execute, she was eventually arrested and charged with resisting arrest, assault of a public servant, and public intoxication. If you believe this is perhaps the worst instance of a woman misbehaving with officers and using father's position as leverage, just wait until you see how Stephanie handles it. On February 21, 2022, officers were dispatched to a 911 call concerning a woman, Stephanie Bloodworth, suspected of drunk driving. She had reportedly almost hit a palm tree and, while reversing, nearly collided with two pedestrians, which could have resulted in a fatal accident. A lookout was issued for her vehicle, and when officers attempted to pull her over, she accelerated away. Hey! Hey! Victor, I'm in Tesla's It just took off. the vehicle hands out of the window why are you running from me why are you running don't get out of the stay in the vehicle right now just stay there for now why are you both hands stay in the vehicle fifth eleven she's getting out Come here. Come here. Stand in front of me. The officers kept yelling at her to stay in the car, but she didn't comply with any of it. And what she does after that is utterly shocking. Stand in front of my fucking vehicle right now. Right now. Ma'am. Sorry, what are you accusing me of? Ma'am? Yeah. You need to come over here right now. Why? Because I'm telling you to. You're running from me. I did not. I'm right here. Yeah. 
Now you are. You need to get over here. She didn't seem interested in obeying the officer's orders at all. And what she does after that will surely blow your mind. Around! For what? 511, she's refusing to comply. Get, hey! Uh. Get out of the vehicle. You got me up, bro. I own this. Actively island. resisting. Get out of the fuck. Get out of the vehicle! She's taking off! Once more, she ran away, and the chase that followed lasted nearly a minute. And this time, officers made sure they did their jobs with complete determination. Stop me over. Oh my god, dad! They're arresting Stop me! Resisting. Dude, what are you doing? Don't f resist. What are you doing, dude? You didn't even know me. Dad, they're arresting me. Stop resisting. Dad, Dad. <laughs> Get on your Dad. Not only did she run away twice, but she also kept resisting arrest. It's quite surprising that even after she was caught, her being violent was inevitable. Hey! Hey! You are not gonna kick me. This is not okay. Get your leg over here and turn over. <laughs> oh my God. Minute, she's <laughs> actively fighting still. After they put her in handcuffs, she kept asking why she was being detained and crying out for her dad without stopping. And she really thought her daddy would come and save her. No, oh my dad. No, I, listen. <laughs> no, I need my dad here before you do anything to me. No, that's not how this works. You're 24 years old. Turn around. I don't care. I, that was an adrenaline rush. I didn't do anything wrong and I need my dad here. So can we even do a DUI you investigation? Don't, you don't need your dad. You're trying to go. I didn't. Wrong, so why are they doing this? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. We have an RP that said she was intoxicated. I find her parked right here. <laughs> intoxicated. Her she sees me. Did you think it does? No. I throw my lights and she's going like 60, swerving, running stop signs. And then she gets out of the vehicle. I have her taser point. I'm telling her like, just stay there. She gets out and then she runs back in the vehicle, rolls up the window and then takes off flying even faster. Like yeah, because who are you? However, to confirm if she was DWI, officers asked her to undergo sobriety tests, to which she replied, You're not taking her out of here. She's going to fight. Ma'am. I'm not under the influence. Ma'am, listen to me. Do you have three houses here. I suspect that you are under the influence. I was influence. just in one of them. Do you want to participate in standard field sobriety exercises to dispel my belief that you're driving under the influence? Yes, of course I'm not. You're, you're, I'm not. Ma'am, you need I've to listen to me. I've been clean for three years. <laughs> I've been clean for three years. Okay. Like, I don't know why this is happening to me. <laughs> Even though the officers tried to explain the situation to her, she was not willing to understand any bit of it. Good fine. Ma'am. Can you just talk to my dad? Don't talk to me. I'm here. I'm here. Code 5. Ma'am, the amount of lives that you just put at risk is ridiculous, okay? I have no sympathy for you right now. You could have easily killed someone. There are little kids that live in this neighborhood. The fact that you would run from me... And Walk up on him like that again. You are... You do not know how lucky you yeah? are you didn't kill someone. That's how you got your empathy, right? Mm. All right, I don't know if we could do it, but she's resisting. Yeah, no. Dad! Debbie! As the officers were escorting her to a patrol car, what she did next will absolutely astonish you. Can I talk to him? Nope, never going in the car. <laughs> Get him. I don't know. Get in! Get in! Get in! We got 
was this new violence? Do you want to let him come back yet? Do you have a hobble? You didn't tell me why you're bringing me in the car. Because you were going to jail. Why? Jesus fucking Christ. Get why? The, get the hobble. Why am I going to jail? Go. Go. Why am I going to jail? What did I do? <laughs> Here's how things went when her dad reached the scene. Why are they? Copy seventy two seventy four five one. You've been drinking, and you were speeding. And, and now the way you've acted, you've gotten yourself in a deep hole, and they're going to take you to jail. You're going to act, and it's going to fall down. Huh? Oh, man, look, so you went to the pool. There's nothing I can do. Just, just see why I ain't. 5011, can you roll that to the female? What did I do? Well, you bought this. I don't know, man. What did I do? You know what you found. No, I don't. What did I do? You don't need to ask why. You don't need to do anything except know that you're going to jail and you'll deal with this. Stop. Why am I going to jail? Because you were speeding. You ran stop signs. Where was I speeding? Well, that's probably Well, do they know? That. Do they know where I was speeding? They were behind you. Had she only acted more like her dad, she might have avoided facing charges for resisting an officer, fleeing from police, DUI, and a moving traffic violation for reckless driving. She posted bonds for three of the charges, including resisting an officer, fleeing from police, and DUI. Stephanie's actions couldn't be justified, but it's undeniably heart-wrenching to witness a mother having to call 911 on her own son due to his actions. On April 23, 2023, officers were confronted with an unexpected situation after receiving a call about a verbal altercation between a mother and her son, Harold. The mother reported that her son had engaged in an argument with her and, in a fit of anger, he punched the stove, shattering the glass top. Let's see how the officers react to this situation. Hey, from this woman. You know, he, he literally broke my the stove. Look, officer, go in there and look. He told me, you ain't my fucking mama, bitch. I'm gonna kill you, hoe. Where my mama at? I'm like, hell, I am your mama. Yeah. Where's he at? He in the house. He literally broke my the stove, man. Okay. Punched it. The, the top of it. Look. Okay. He got to leave. I was I can't keep going through this shit every night. Get to your victim. But I, he temporarily stay here. You be back and forth, but you can't just damage that woman's stuff like that. I'm dead. I'm scared for myself. He gonna try to hurt me. But what his fucking mama? You and my mama home. You and my mama bitch. Don't listen, don't. Y'all going there to see what did in my soul, man. I'm pressing Charlie. I am. She got to leave him. This is this woman's place, man. I agree. According to the mother, Harold not only shattered the stove glass, but also abused and verbally harassed her. I can't. <laughs> Harold, Harold, come outside. Nah. I'm come outside. Come on, man. You don't gotta do that, man. Harold, go out there. No, no, no. Let him in. What you talking about? Let him in for what? Let him in for what? No, I'm a bitch. I'm a whole ain't your mama. Call you no bitch. No, hey, no. Harold. I ain't do nothing yet. Come outside. Hold on, sir. Stop. Put that down. Stop. Harold. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. Harold. Stop. 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 Come outside. Get on the ground. At this point, officers were being quite accommodating to Harold, yet he continued to exaggerate the situation without any apparent cause. On the ground. Get on the ground, Harold. What I did. What's on the table before? Get on the ground. Harold's What y'all came to the house for? What I did? Your mom let us in. What she let y'all in for? Stay right there. What did you put in? So you put a fair charge on me? I don't have nothing on me at all. Stay away from that table. 
Ma'am. That's stuff that she had. Ma'am. Ma'am, can you just wait outside for us? Yeah, I went to, I've been, I've been to the hospital. Oh, how? how? Uh, can you just wait outside for us? You gotta be always calling me. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Even though he was placed in cuffs, it was evident that his mom was extremely angry with him for what he had done. I told him, I don't got nothing on me. What you trying to touch my ass? Please do not rape me. I'm telling you, I'm gonna press charges. Do not rape me. I just told up. you I ain't do nothing. I don't got nothing on me. Stand up. You're not finna see my ass, Chief. That's what you're not gonna do now. Now you can let me out these hands because I'm ain't do nothing. I'm gonna pull your pants up for you. I'm finna pull up myself. You don't gotta touch me. Please do not touch okay. me. You just tried to rape me. You just tried to rape me now. Sorry. Sorry. You just tried to rape me. I just told you I don't got nothing in my pockets. I'm not gonna let you rape me. That's just my ID card. That's just my ID card, sir. It's funny that he allegedly expressed that he was going to press charges on the officers because he tried to sexually assault him. Let's what go. you doing? Ain't nothing going on. Ain't going on well. What is they doing? I'm not hey, doing Robo. Anything. Can you press charges on me? None of that stuff is not mine. Just what are you talking about? Y'all just come to people's house. Me. Come on now. Stop talking about drugs. Ain't no drugs How you gonna tell us my stuff? Just, can right. you just stay out of the house until come we get out? Hold on, not hold on a second. No, I'm not lying, because I don't know, Harold. Not we lying. thought it was weed, but clearly, it ain't that. Man, they let people smoke weed and you, stuff, You man. can smoke weed. You can. You can, but that's it. Okay. Okay. That was weed. So, basically, I just got the window up to... I wasn't sure if he got anything else on him. Is he hiding? We think he did Molly. Molly? Yeah. This is pretty consistent with that. No, um, I just came yesterday. It's fine. It appears that the officers discovered an illegal substance in his room, and his mom also acknowledged that he does indeed smoke illegal substances, as he was not being himself throughout the incident. Yeah. So I am letting you know that you are being placed under arrest for the possession of narcotics. Yeah. Drug paraphernalia, resisting arrest, and tampering with evidence. Uh, 50. We know you're on papers, my girl. We don't want to see you go to jail. We want to see you do better. You ain't tired. So get better and stop doing drugs, for real. You want to come live with me? Do it, because I'm going to Oh my God, look at him. I told you they don't send him to the state hospital. He just that fucked up. I love you. All right, come on. Uh, okay. Say it back. You don't love me? I don't want to talk. Who talking to you? you. What's, my, what's my name? What's my name? All right, two, I'm gonna go. Not even yourself, I love you, bro. His mother's concern for his well-being was evident, and handing him over to the officer was likely the best solution, considering he persisted in drug use. Nevertheless, Harold was arrested on charges of possession of narcotics, drug paraphernalia, resisting arrest, and tampering with evidence. It's unfortunate to see kids engaging in illegal activities at a young age, and having to face their mothers in such situations is saddening because the next case involving Jemiah appears to be following a similar pattern. On January 16, 2022, officers responded to a call from an unidentified individual who reported witnessing a 16-year-old named Jemiah stealing and fleeing with another teenager's iPhone. Upon arrival, police were informed that Jemiah had requested the phone from another teenager to contact her mother. But as soon as he obtained possession of the phone, he made a swift escape. So wait, I thought they were gonna walk back. Well, give me the description one more time. It was like black shoes and like white guy, like, black guy, black guy, and it has like a green tag on it. Like it's and you don't know him. Tag. I do not know him. I About your age him. or what? If I, he, should, he looks like he would be like a, a grade above. Uh, Did he hit you or anything, or he just yanking out of your hand? He didn't. Like I let him. He said he wanted to call his mom. And knowing me, I'm a good person. I let him use it. But he, seconds later, he just books it off. Okay. Are you going to press charges if we find him? No, no, I need to know right now. What were the charges? It's theft. Yeah. Okay. According to both the bystander and the person from whom he stole the phone, Jemiah appeared to be a decent individual, but later revealed his true intentions behind taking the phone. Additionally, the adult confirmed that he intended to press charges against Jemiah when asked by the officers. Start from the very beginning. I know you already told me, but now you're on body camera. Okay, I was walking like out of the school campus, which is like to the right, and then out of nowhere, I just feel a tap on my shoulder, and I put my headphones on. I was just in music. I turned my, I put my headphones on, and he's like, "Oh, can I call your phone to come around?" And that's when I just said, "You know, I, I usually always let him happen because I know if I was in that situation, right. I would have gone to send this them right." So I gave it to him. I, I turned my uh, AirPods off so he can use his phone. And then, like, 
not even less than like 10 seconds, I just see him. He just runs across the street. Like, even with Carson, he just runs it. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if he was kidding or not. So, and I just see him. He just looks back and keeps running. So that's when I just started running after him. Did you run across the street? No, no, no. It was just right over here. So he ran down here first and then eventually yeah. crossed the street? No, no, He ran and I ran after him. And then, like, he, I was, he was running down here. I was right behind him. He saw when he crossed the street and I yelled at him. I just, with the full story in hand, it was now time to locate Jemiah and ensure that he faced the consequences for his actions. I got the right to Hey, stop, stop, stop! Hey! Stop! Please! Stop! He went back! You're there! The officer instantly exited the patrol car upon spotting a teenager matching the description provided by the victim. However, the suspect, Jemiah, once again fled the scene. But finally... Hey! Right. Traffic 12, 10, 12, in front of Joseph's. Bro. Lay down! Lay down! Lay down! Hey, come on! Put your hands above your back! I don't got nothing, bro. Do you move! Hey. Do you hear me? Hey! I don't got nothing, bro. I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing. I want to custody. Bro! Oh my God. What'd I do? What the f are you money for, dog? Because y'all chasing me for what? I ain't do nothing. Yeah, okay. You okay. Get up. Oh, Get the f up. Oh, come on. Jemiah was located by the officers and ultimately apprehended. But just wait until you hear his fabricated story and what he tells his mother. Uh. Okay, so listen, this is why you're being detained, okay? You're fitting the description of a suspect of a theft of a cell phone. That's why you're being detained right now. My, my phone is right there. Let me finish, okay? This hey. is why you're being detained. Explain something to you. Hey, if you run, you're getting paid. I'm not going to run. All right, thank you. I'm making sure you understand that. What do I do? Can I tell my son? No. No. Despite his repeated inquiries about what he had done, Jemiah would later be informed by the police about his unethical actions. Yes, we'll figure all that out. All your jewelry, belt, everything like that can be given to your customer. Can we give it to right now? We can give it to them. It's all going to be on camera, okay? But right now you've been placed under arrest. Give, just give us one second, okay? He was arrested under suspicion of theft, although it's still to be confirmed whether he actually stole the iPhone. Do you want your cousin to talk or do you want me to talk I'll to talk. him? Okay. Just put it over my head. Mommy. I'm getting arrested. Why? I don't know. Why the fuck are you getting arrested? No, I don't know. Hi, um, this is Officer Erickson with Palm Beach Gardens. He called his mother, claiming ignorance about the reason for his arrest. However, despite initially lying to his mother, he would later confess that he had indeed stolen the phone. So, so, so here's what I'm going to ask you. So are you denying any involvement in, in what just happened? No, I'm not. I didn't do anything. So you never used his phone? No. You never took his phone no, from him? So why were you running from phone. us? But we try chasing me for y'all gunning me down right there. Okay. I'm scared. Here, here's what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to leave this completely up to you. You're being charged with what just happened. Okay? You've been identified. You ran from us. You're being charged with a theft. It's a theft. You're not being charged with robbery. Listen, just listen to me because I'm going to tell you something and then you're going to go in the car and it's going to be over and done with. Okay? If you want to make good on this and you want to show us where you dropped the phone, it'll help you with your cooperation. Okay, it'll show that you've cooperated. It'll show that you're trying to work with us. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. I can't afford it. It's astonishing how the officer really trapped him while flattering him, because in the end, he really did confess to the theft. You know it's theft, right? Come on, man. Is it really worth it? Because remember, this is all being recorded. You have the opportunity for anyone to see this. And if we tell the victim that you're cooperating, that can go a long way, okay? 
You made a dumb decision. Can we agree on that? But if you help us find the phone, this will be a lot easier for everyone. Ooh, you ran over there? You ran over there? Yeah. Where did you drop it over there? When you ran? Yeah. Where do you remember it falling out? I can show you how to take me over there. We can take you over there? Do you remember it's was it in this plaza? Yeah. Okay. Is it where'd you run from over there? He eventually confessed to stealing the phone, and on top of that, he even assisted the officers by showing them where he had discarded the phone. 1340. You know that guy, right? I've never. Okay. Don't tell me. Listen, man. Don't give me a phone. I mean, I always do. That's the thing. So, and yeah, they always return that. it back. And since it was a school, I didn't, I'm pretty sure I didn't. If you want to help him out, tell him, hey, I'll dial the number on speakerphone for you and I'll hold it. If you need to call somebody. Yeah, and you hold it like this. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. All right. All right. Just I'm chances. That side or? Oh, huh? yeah, yeah, wait for your phone. Coming. Right, coming. Just, just, yeah. It's a little damaged, they say, because he tossed it. Oh, is it? Yeah, really? Yeah, we're going to, that's, that's it. it. We're going to give it back to him. I grab it now? Yeah, he, uh, he, he said he did it, so. Right. Is that the phone? Yeah. Does it still work? I think he turned it off. Exactly. He probably realized we were tracking him. That might just be your screen protector that's cracked. Yeah, that, that's dope. Was that like that before? A little bit. Like, okay, but hopefully it's just your screen protector. But uh, yeah, that's not, I can, I can Do I have any of the serial numbers and all that, right? Because we're not entering it. I don't need a like, list. It's just okay. The victim retrieved their phone, and Jemiah was ultimately charged with resisting arrest and theft, with the theft charge being petty theft, valued between $100 and $750. Despite facing consequences, Jemiah was ultimately truthful about the incident in the end. However, the next woman is neither truthful nor calm, and her only recourse seems to be crying out for her dad. On February 10, 2023, in Juliet, Illinois, officers noticed a car driving the wrong way and decided to conduct a routine traffic stop. However, what initially seemed like a standard procedure quickly turned into an unexpected situation as the woman began reacting aggressively towards the officers. Do you have your insurance with you? I do. Uh, yeah, my app. All right, can I see it? Yeah. I also see you were going the wrong way over there. Where? So you guys were coming out Jefferson, and then you guys turned on Center Street left. And then you guys went into uh, Wendy's. Yeah, my house. All right, just hang tight for me. Uh, Leave the window down. No, leave the window down. It don't matter. It's not illegal. You can put my window up if you want. Leave the window down. It don't matter. It don't matter if I put my window up or down. It yes, don't it give a f to you. Leave the window down. It don't care. It don't matter to her. I need you to come get me because she not, she, she, she not going to. No one's doing anything with your dog. I'm talking about my dog. No, I need my mom to come get my dog. We are on Center Street and Hickory. I need you to come get baby because I'm talking to you. Why would you go to jail? I'm not talking to you, lady. The police pulled us over, and this lady on bullshit, these ladies is on bullshit. She was already reacting aggressively towards the officers before officers even asked her to stop rolling up her window. Well, don't worry about it. Girl, you know I ain't got no f weapons. Step back. On you, right? No, okay. obviously not. I would have reached. Yeah, I would have beat your ass. I would have beat your ass. All right, go ahead and step back here for me. Okay? Can you shut the door so my dog don't hop out in the traffic? Can you shut back the door? Up. Can you shut the door so back my dog? Up. Can you shut the door so my dog back don't step? Up. Can you put the window up so no. my dog don't step out into traffic? Can you put the window up? Can you put the window up so my dog don't step in the traffic? It seems she's demanding, as if it's the officer's responsibility to handle everything instead of taking responsibility herself. Is that dumb? Like, in Remo, we do nothing. Are y'all slow? You're driving down a one-way street. Okay, well, I ain't do, was I driving? Was I in the, uh, was I in the f***ing driver's seat? No, so, no. All right, I know, ain't she trained good? I know, you love her, huh? I know, right? Is she trained good? Admit it, admit it. I did this myself. Is she trained good? No, you don't put her back to Fifi. No. Oh, hang on, right here. Is anybody talking to y'all? No, 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 no. Don't down with her. Don't be calling her. No. I'm talking to both of them. They both Thank down. You, no, no, no. Yes. no. You're not getting in the car. I'm, I ain't getting in the car. What the f*** 
She tries to make a mockery of the officer by pretending her dog is pulling her, as if they wouldn't notice. What's surprising is her persistent effort to justify the behavior. Right now, okay? Stop. Okay? Stop. What is wrong with these people, bro? Nobody did nothing to these people. I never did nothing to these people. Stop moving. Ain't nobody talking to you. The f okay, we'll take the phone and the dog. That's the only reason why I called you. I don't give a I don't give a f what you're talking about. These mother tweaking, I'm talking about the females. This Take it off. That's the only bitch I'm talking about. I don't give a f that's what I still bought y'all. I don't give a f Go home. I don't want you to see me like this. I want you to, I, the only reason I called you was to take the dog. Despite her attempts to resist, she was quickly placed in handcuffs when she attempted to engage in an altercation with the officers. Throughout the situation, she was on the phone with her dad, narrating her situation moment by moment, perhaps hoping he would come and save her, despite her actions towards the officers. Stop, let go of me. What the f y'all doing this for? Y'all bogus as f. Y'all just thirsty for some action. What the f is wrong with y'all? Y'all thirsty for All right, some on, shit. Man, step in the car. Shut the f up. Shut the f up. Had she behaved more courteously, the situation might have ended with just a ticket. However, her behavior landed her in the backseat of a patrol car, and even there, her aggression and violence didn't end. Open the door! You little ugly ass! Open the door! 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 Hello? Open the door! Open the door! So when I get out of jail, I can have my phone? Can you do that? Can you do that one thing for me? Can you? Can you? Okay, so go before she pull off. Before she, can you do that one thing, please? Before I, can you do that? So go, I don't wanna hear nothing from you. Can you do that one thing for me? And my cuffs are too tight. They, no, I don't give a what you gotta say. I don't give a Can you do what I gotta say? Can you do what the f I gotta say? No, it's with my put my bag back. Later, she was charged with aggravated battery on a police officer and resisting arrest. If only she hadn't behaved so poorly, things could have proceeded much more smoothly. This is just the beginning, because you haven't seen how Graham cried like a baby boy when he found himself in legal trouble. On January 21st, 2023, several officers were dispatched to a local club in response to reports of a disturbance caused by a man named Graham. According to bystanders, Trent was repeatedly grabbing a woman's backpack, causing her to feel uncomfortable. But he keeps, he keeps grabbing the backpack. Well, he doesn't have shit. If he does, he's gonna f him. I'll drive you. I'll drive you. Oh, don't get to me. I'm talking to my mom. She Where's wants you the mom can't share the department. Don't tell me some bullshit. I'm your brother. If anybody touch Graham. my mom, yeah. I'm that harpist right now. Graham. And Eric's trying to get under arrest. Hey. Don't touch me. I'm talking to my mom. She works for the sheriff's department. Graham. Come here, bro. Graham. Hey. I'm not going to let you go. Stop walking. So, Gary, do you know who the f is? I take no blue. So, let's take care of him. Please give him a breath. Please give him a breath. I'm not taking care of him. I got to leave. 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 I
When officers arrived at the scene, they encountered a large crowd engaged in a verbal altercation. Some bystanders appeared to be trying to intervene and calm Graham down to defuse the situation. Graham was on the phone with her mother, informing her about the situation. But there is much more that he would be revealing to her later. <laughs> After creating the whole chaos, he was now trying to elude the capture. But cops would make sure that didn't happen. I want to fool my mother. Stop touching me. Stop touching him. They're grabbing me and they're grabbing me and harassing me. Sit down. 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 Mom, look, mom, look, no, no, no. Stop. Just stop. I'm just stop. Just stop. We're putting you in here. Bro, bro, just stop. Being arrested. stop. I'm not, I'm walking. My mom is coming to get me. I okay. Why am I being the team for? What did I do wrong? You're not listening to me. I'm not, but it's, not, but it's a freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want. I don't gotta listen to you. What am I being the team for? When officers told him that he would be detained and put in cuffs, he started to show some aggressive behavior. Okay. No, I don't care, just, mom. You're being okay. detained, bro. I'm not getting detained for what? Get on your back. Get on your back. Get on your back. Four people, four people. Relax. It takes four. No, it takes Hit. four. Give me your arm. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. I got five cops on me trying to. Give me your arm. Relax. 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 Throughout the incident, Graham kept yelling that he wanted his mom by his side, but it seemed his pleas went unheard as she was unable to come and intervene to help him out of the situation. I'm waiting for my mom to get here. I don't give a Anybody say, I, want, I say what I say, I'm waiting for my mother to get here. Alright, you might shoot me and kill me right now because. Yep, I'm waiting for my mom. I swear to God, everything. Yeah, do it, do it. I used to wrestle, dude. Come on. Yep, come on, dude. I'm waiting for my mom. I swear to God, I'll put up a battle till my mom get here. Okay. Yeah. One hand. Hey, look, behind my back. One arm behind my back. Okay. Get my mom's in here. I said, wait for my mom. 
I want my mom to get here first before you can do anything. No, thanks. Talk to me. He continued to resist the officer's attempts to get him to sit in the patrol car, all the while persistently asking for his mother to be with him until the officers took further action. She's coming. She works for the Martin County Sheriff's Department. Wait till my mom get here. You can talk to her. I don't care. I'm not getting any car. car. Uh, well, the fight. I don't care, dude. I don't give a fuck what you say. Okay. I have a freedom of speech in every accent. Listen, no, man. I'm waiting for my listen, mom. You need to so, relax. I can't relax until yeah. my mom get here. I don't trust anybody but my listen, mom. No one's my mom and dad been doing through a force. The only person listen. I got. He claimed that his mom works in the police force and thought that using her status might get him out of trouble. But it was clear that such a tactic wouldn't work in this situation. Firearm inside my bar. Right? Yeah, had a what? A firearm inside, inside the, the bar. No, I didn't. How do you know I had it? Hey, how do I? Huh? How do you know I had it inside the bar? All right, prove it. Prove they can't have a dad. I don't have a dad. Okay. I look up to my mother, and she works for the Martin County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Okay. Once she get here, she's out of the way. I'll have her yes. come over here. Yes, I'm not gonna sit no cop car because I'm not that type of person. What did I do? What did King please tell me? What I did? You're gonna have to have a seat. But you guys have to have a seat, bro. Even after being finally placed in the car following all the chaos he caused, he continued to cry uncontrollably inside the car. Graham was later arrested and charged with carrying a concealed weapon firearm, resisting arrest, and possession of a controlled substance. As we reach the end of Graham's case, the last one involves a woman who believed her law enforcement father would come to her rescue from the consequences of her illegal actions. On November 3, 2023, while patrolling in Ohio, an officer's attention was caught by a Ford Explorer SUV making an illegal turn, causing the officer to brake suddenly. When the vehicle came to a halt, the female driver, daughter of an ex-law enforcement officer, persistently made excuses, asserting her perceived rightness in the situation. Hello. Um, so the reason why I stopped, you made that right turn from Pearl to Bagley. You met her at the red light, and I'm not sure if you realize, but you almost struck me. I apologize. No, I did not. Okay. You got driver's license on you? I actually don't have anything. I was going up to work. I didn't bring anything with me okay. today. Okay. No big deal. Just take time your info. Yeah, you're supposed to treat it. Well, that right there, you can't even make a right turn at this thing, at the red light. I started working at this office, so I, I'm not really used to this area right now. I'm so sorry. Despite the officer's efforts to explain the situation, she couldn't recall making an illegal turn. And to make matters worse, she didn't even have her driver's license with her. So where are you heading right now? I'm going back home. I'm going back home. Where's your job at? It's not right there. So, uh, it's in... Is there anything illegal inside this vehicle? Who smokes weed in here? Uh, it's just my car. Hmm? It's just my car. So nothing illegal? Can I look inside? Uh, I apologize. I was just heading home. Like, I really I really didn't know that the guy can't turn right there. I'm 100% aware of it now. So the reason why I'm is because I do smell weed. I apologize. Yeah. And I, I, I really didn't mean to. Like, I had no idea. I'll be super aware of the okay. intersection from now on. Um, I'll be way more confident. Give me a favor because we're going to cause traffic back up here. Can you just pull into that street right here? I'll just make a right. Sure. As the officer detected the odor of weed, he requested permission to search the vehicle, but she flatly rejected the request. However, that wouldn't deter the officer from carrying out his duty. Step out. Huh? Please come here. I have not written you anything. I know, I'm just trying I, to be. I don't. I also know my rights, and I don't think I have to. You do. So don't make it hard. I really please. I just want to go home. I'm asking you to step out nicely. Just go home. I'm asking you to step out nicely. Can you get your name and badge number? It's Officer Nasser, 732. I really come on out. Really she outright refused to step out of the vehicle, and to add to the situation, she demanded the officer's name and badge number. But wait till you'll find out the reason for such inquiry. Okay, so now what? Uh, I'm not comfortable with you 
Okay, well, um, I can smell the marijuana too as I'm up here. And I. So. It's not a crime. It is. So if an officer tells you you have to step out of the vehicle, you have to step out of the vehicle. That's a lawful order. Okay? So. That's not true. I'm, I'm being very nice and patient. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you comply with me, I'll give you whatever you want. But right now. You're not. Oh, are you a sovereign citizen? I would that, know your name and badge number. Patrolman Venus Badge 722, okay? Thank you. Okay, so you've been given a lawful order to exit the vehicle three times by me, okay? That is the first time that you've actually asked me. Okay. So, Can you um, please exit the vehicle? I would like to wait. Can you please exit the vehicle? I would like to wait. She rolled up her window and refused to comply with the officer's orders, insisting that her dad was on his way to assist her. Please step out of the vehicle. I would still like to wait. Okay. If you continue this, you're going to be arrested for obstruction. Okay? And that would be an unlawful arrest, and you can deal with that in court. Good luck with that in court. Okay. Yeah, so listen, I'm going to tell you, if you do not comply, if you do not get out within the next 30 seconds, I'm breaking this window, and you're being drug out. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? If you do not comply, I've given a lawful order for you to exit the vehicle 10 times. If you do not comply within 30 seconds, I will break the windshield and drag you out of the car. Do you understand that? I don't think I can make that any more clear to you. You must exit the vehicle. Okay? You can post this. You can think you're cool posting it on the internet. You are wrong. You are wrong. Okay? So you must exit the vehicle. You can peacefully exit the vehicle. Since she refused to comply with any of the officer's orders, there was no alternative left but to take further action. You can please show up here. Okay. I'm going to break the window if you do not exit the vehicle. I need a supervisor here before you take those kind of extreme measures. Ready? There's no, no, sir, please. I need a supervisor on the scene. Officer, I need a supervisor on the scene. I need a supervisor on the scene. Yeah, we got one. I need a supervisor on the scene. Hands by your back right now. Hands by your back right now. Stop resisting. Yeah, stop resisting. Stop resisting. I'm going to get this out your hands. I'm not letting go of that. Okay, I'm going to put it on Here's top of the car. I think you you are, are being recorded by well. three of our cameras. And now you're under arrest for obstruction. How's that, huh? Even after being put in cuffs and arrested, she still had hopes that her dad would help her get out of trouble. It was, um, it was actually my father right there. Okay. I was unaware that, that I couldn't turn right there, and I just started recently working with him as office. Um, Okay. Uh, he's a private investigator. Um, he's been in criminal justice for over 30 years, and so. Hello. Hi. I'm your dad. Hi. I'm yeah, I'm actually explained that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm a former law enforcement mm -hmm. private investigator now okay. in office. Yeah, should explain that as well. He works for me, so he called me. He was up at the office. I don't know what the actually did, but boyfriend's one of these goddamn sovereign, you know. Okay. Well, I yell at him all the time. In the so that's why I, I just. Yeah. I mean, we can if see. I can release her, great. Okay. Uh, that'll be, I, you know, that's my car. It's insert under my name. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to, but I'll make sure she goes to court or whatever she got to okay. do. Um, I don't know if that's hard on me. Or yeah, we could see, you know, just from talking to her in a little bit of the back of the car here, you could see the, the, the tinges of the sovereign citizen or yeah, at yeah, least the, yeah. the, the, the belief. Okay. One of those came out of the car when, <laughs> when, when we actually opened up the passenger side right. door. So. Well, I her motive for asking about the officer's name and badge number was to file a complaint with her father, who was also in law enforcement. Even though she was released to her father as he requested, she was later charged with obstructing official business and open container, in addition to receiving a traffic citation for the illegal turn.